Hi, good day everyone. My name is Matt Haynes. I am a principal consultant here at Expand in Hong Kong. Expand is a boutique consultancy specializing in digital technology and we have offices obviously here and we have another one in Singapore. We have Sydney and Melbourne where we're headquartered. So we specialize in digital and technology into all types of organizations. They could be startup, MNC, medium-sized organizations, but essentially we help those companies find the best talent in both local and global markets. And so myself, I've been a recruiter for just over 12 years now. I'm originally from London. Um, I grew up there, I left there at the age of sort of 24, and um, went traveling for a year in Asia, um, had an amazing time, decided not to go back to the UK, actually moved to Australia where I lived for seven years in Perth, um, one of the best places um, on the planet as far as I'm concerned, and then moved to Hong Kong five years ago now, uh, coming up to five years this January, I should say. Um, so in that time, I've worked with a number of different organizations and people, and I really wanted to kind of start this video series now, I suppose, giving people some insight into Hong Kong specifically. And if people want to ask me any questions about other locations I've lived, I'm happy to talk there as well, i.e. Australia and the UK. But right now, I want to focus on Hong Kong, what it's like to live here, transitioning here, if you're thinking about making that move or you're looking at different locations around the world right now. So one of the major things that people always tend to ask me about Hong Kong is about the, the cost of living. Um, and you know, I'm happy to talk to you about that now. So I am gonna include in the uh, some of the comment area there some links um, to places where you can go and have a look if you want to find out about the relative cost versus where you are right now because to be honest with you hong kong is one of the most expensive places in the city to to um sorry, expensive places in the world to live so you know there the cost could be you know 50 percent up from where you are now or 30 percent or you know maybe just five percent depending you know where you're coming from so it's hard for me to talk specifics in that sense but just to give you some context um, you know, for example, I think one of the major things in Hong Kong is about convenience. You know, the more convenient you would like something to be, the more expensive it's going to be, whether that's food, whether that's accommodation, transportation, um, you name it, really. Um, it's going to, it all scales in that sense. So, for example, I live in Moi Wu. Uh, Moi Wu is a fishing village, um, which is just... Uh, off of Lantau. Lantau is actually the biggest island in the Hong Kong archipelago um, and it's where the airport is, where Disneyland is. Um, there's a place called Discovery Bay which is very very popular amongst expats um, and like I said I live in Moi Wu which is essentially a fishing village um, which I love. Uh, it's perfect for me and my wife and my dog. Um, and out there you can live for a lot cheaper in terms of accommodation for example. Um, than you can in, say, living in Central or Causeway Bay or Kennedy Town or Sai Ing Pun or Sheng Wan. These are very, very trendy, cool locations and I highly recommend them, but they are going to cost you more money um, or you're just going to get less for your money. Um, I think that's one of the key things here as well is that Hong Kong apartments, offices, everything is just smaller. It's just smaller. And I think a lot of people struggle with that when they first get in, especially if you're coming from somewhere like Australia, where you are used to having space, um, square meterage to call your own. Um, you, know, you don't really have that luxury here. You do tend to live on top of other people. But again, the further you go out, um, you know, so my, for example, my travel is nearly um, an hour and 15 door to door, and I've got three legs. I have a bicycle ride in the morning, uh, which I actually really love, it's beautiful, it's along the coast. Um, and then I get on a ferry for half an hour, uh, and then I jump on a bus for sort of 15 to 20 minutes. So it really depends, obviously, on traffic and various bits and pieces of the bus, but I would say an average an hour and 15 uh, for me, door to door. Um, so, you know, but for that, I essentially get more bang for my buck. So I'm able to live in a beautiful house. Um, you know, we have two floors, we have some rooms outside in the courtyard. Um, 
to be honest, I've even got access to my own little private um, sort of beach area, which is pretty amazing. We have a rooftop. So, you know, I'm paying for that in the inconvenience um, of living out in Lantau in my room. Whereas if you wanted to live in Central, uh, well, that's just going to cost you millions, literally. Um, so, you know, I think that's one of the, the, the major things here um, in Hong Kong is that convenience versus cost. Um, that being said, other things are, um, you know, really, really quite affordable, I believe, things like transportation. Um, you know, for example, the buses, the trams, the MTR, taxis are all very, very cheap, um, fast, readily available in English, easy to use, convenient. Um, they use an octopus card here. Uh, which is equivalent to a sort of a UK Oyster card or whatever it is in your own country or city that's used for transportation. But not only transportation here, you can use it on anything. Um, you can use it at McDonald's, you can use it in 7-Eleven, um, any other sort of those little corner stores, most of those accept it. A lot of shops, uh, you know, literally there are thousands of retailers that accept Octopus Card. So some people use it as an alternative to cash in general or credit cards or whatever. So it's a very, very convenient system. Um, so on the transportation side of things, you know, very easy. The minimum fare of the Hong Kong taxi is about 24 Hong Kong dollars. And depending on where you are in the world, roughly in euros, talking at sort of 10 to 1-ish. So we're sort of talking you know, 2 euros-ish as a beginning point in a taxi. Uh, and to be honest, the increments are quite minimal. Um, after that, so you could do a decent taxi ride here, and yeah, you know, it will cost you home. Depending on where you're going, you know, not much money really, not much money. In all things being compared, for example, a taxi in the UK or a taxi in Switzerland or, or Australia, you're going to pay a lot more money for that journey. So, you know, I think there's a lot of upside in that side of things. And um, again, with for example, food, um, food, complete scale, complete spectrum. Um, you can find whatever you want in Hong Kong, I believe, so far. I've, you know, if I've been inspired to eat Nigerian food or Tibetan or, or whatever it is I want, you can find that in Hong Kong. The question will be is A, quality, and B, cost. Um, so, you know, and those two things don't always correlate. Um, just because something's super expensive doesn't mean you're going to get the quality. And just because something's really cheap doesn't mean it's going to be poor. Uh, or bad quality. So, you know, it's about experimentation here. Um, and one thing I will say about Hong Kong restaurants is um, there are many, many to choose from. However, if you see a restaurant that you really like and that's something you really want to try, go and do it immediately. Literally, if you wait a week, sometimes just at the weekend or whenever, you know, oh, we'll come here in a few months when you know, my friends are here from wherever, do not be too surprised if it's gone because restaurants come and go very, very quickly in Hong Kong. Even institutions, there's a place called the American Peking Club, which is a very famous Hong Kong restaurant, which has been going for decades and recently closed down uh, out of the blue, basically. Um, and I think no one really saw that coming because it was always busy. Um, it was never, ever empty. There were always uh, seats. You may have heard of it. It's the restaurant where the waiters are incredibly rude. Uh, and really, I suppose in that sense, um, yeah, play their role, play the characters, and uh, it's really, really was a fantastic experience. But that's gone now, uh, and you know any other concepts that you see coming up, they will come and go. Uh, that much I can almost promise you. So you know, do jump on a bandwagon when you see one and enjoy it. Um, other things about cost as well would be sort of the cost of uh, food products. You know, if you were to go to like a supermarket or the wet market. Um, you know, depending on where you live, wet markets can be the way to go. Um, you know, it just really depends. Each town is quite different. And obviously, um, the closer you are to central, the more expensive things are going to be because the cost of real estate is a lot higher. So they've got to pay their rent, they've got to pay staff. So you're going to pay more and more money. I tend to find when you go out towards, um, you know, sort of more new territories, Kowloon, things like that, is when you start to see a real drop in price of products, specifically in wet markets. You know, at a supermarket, we have Fusion and Welcome here, which are the two big, big, sort of in every suburb, there's several of them type supermarkets. And yeah, you know, the prices are pretty much equity across the board. You then get things like Jason's, and you get things like City Super and Great, 
where these are like selling generally quite premium products at a premium price. Some things though are great prices in there. It really is one of those you have to go and explore it. Uh, and you're gonna, that's where you're gonna find probably your more niche products as well. If you're looking to cook something a little bit special, you need some specific ingredients. Um, yeah, for example, I was looking for some allspice um, for, for some products I wanted to, so, sorry, for a meal I wanted to cook at home. And that's where I found it at great. And the price was amazing. Like it was cheaper than I could find it anywhere else in Hong Kong. Um, so, you know, it really is kind of one of those, um, you know, you've got to just go in and explore these things, I think, in Hong Kong. So there's quite a lot going on in that set. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a bit, that's a fair bit I've covered in terms of cost. Um, you know, things like clothing and stuff like that. Well, look, it's a, a city that has um, both both ends of the scale again, you know, ultra luxury, all the way down to sort of, you know, very, very basement bin sort of prices around clothing. Again, it just depends on what you're looking for. I'm six foot seven, uh, so there's no buying clothes for me in Hong Kong. I do everything online. And, uh, you know, there is a shop, a couple of really, really great places I do recommend in Hong Kong if you're going to go clothes shopping. There's one called Grana. G A sorry G R A N A that's G R A N A. Um, I'll put that in the link in the bottom and in there you know you can really um, you can actually go into the shop, try things on, order it online, and it gets delivered to you. And uh, you know you can choose different colorways online and stuff like that. We can actually go into the shop and figure out what the right fit for you is. And then ASOS is the other obvious one. But this is just for me because I'm uh, six foot seven and yeah, Asia's not made for me in that sense. Um, so I think there's some of the key things I wanted to cover on cost there. If you've got any comments, any questions, um, you know, please do come back to me. I'd, I'd be really happy to answer anything for you. Um, I will be putting up a video a week, roughly, maybe sometimes a bit more than that. Um, and I'm going to keep covering off different subjects about living in Hong Kong, uh, you know, from a whole range of things from cultural to socioeconomic, to political, to, to, to different things really, just to give people an insight of what it is like to live here, how easy it is to move here, and um, you know why I think it's a great city. Cheers guys, thank you very much for your time, and um, I look forward to your comments. Cheers.